Hello, and welcome to another Far Bank Fly Fishing School episode. This episode focuses on fishing streamers for the river trout fly angler. Fishing streamers for trout is an utter drug for many anglers, as the eats are hard, the fish are aggressive, and generally speaking, the average size of trout cord is bigger than most other fly fishing techniques. So, without further ado, let's jump into this episode and see what you need to do to become a successful streamer angler. All right, so what is a streamer? Well, look at this beautiful bevy of color. These are streamers. This is my box of streamers. Um, and there's a really a couple of reasons you could fish a streamer. One is that fish feed on baby fish. This streamer here, as you can see, looks like a tiny baby fish swimming along the water. And when trout feed on small fish, it could be minnows, it could be small trout, it doesn't really matter what the actual fish is they're feeding on, but sometimes they aggressively feed on minnows and small fish patterns. So in that situation, you would fish a streamer like this, what's called a bait fish pattern. But also streamers can be things that annoy fish. They, they, they arouse that aggression in a fish. They're a territorial dispute, or they just, they're in the way of the fish and the fish will slash them and grab them. And this yellow thing, for example, there's nothing in the world that looks like that with yellow fur and brown and rubber legs hanging down. It doesn't look like a fish, but it sure as heck annoys fish and fish will slash and grab it out of a, in a fury. So streamers could be either. They can be either this annoying thing the attractor type thing, or they can be a bait fish pattern. And once you decide you want to fish streamers, well, you need to get a selection of streamers ranging from everything. This is about as small a stream as you fish. This thing's called a leech, still officially classed as a streamer, quite small as you can see, not a lot of weight to it, not a lot of size to it. When fish are feeding on small leeches and small minnows, you can fish something this size. Sometimes you have to annoy the fish. Sometimes you just have to go up to some giant streamers like this thing. This thing's called a Dolly Lama. Look at this beauty. It's got a trailing hook here. It's got a lot of flash and fluff and rabbit fur on the front end. There's a huge cone on there. This is an incredibly effective stream. It catches so many fish on this Dolly Lama and it just annoys them and the fish hate it and they hit it so hard. So as you build up your streamer collection, you want to start with some small ones that the bait fish, you want to have some attractors that are small. You want some larger bait fish and you want some larger streamers as well. So you're really just covering the bases with that. So really, that's what streamers are. Now the question is, why and how would you fish a streamer? Well, let's take a look at that in this very next chapter. The why is fairly simple. Fish don't feed all the time. And when they're not feeding and you want to catch something, you've got to do something about it. So a stream is a great opportunity. You throw it in, annoy the fish, they grab it, and they'll have a fish on the end of the line when they're not feeding on anything else. So that's one really good reason. But again, as we said just now in the previous chapter, sometimes they feed on bait fish, and when they are, that's another reason why you'd set up the streamer. But perhaps even bigger reason than that is for some people, the tug is the drug. It's all about feeling and grabbing a big fish on the end of the line that you don't know about. Here we have my mate Steve Daly. You can see he's just bent into a fish. He stripped his line above that log jam, and you can see this big pull of the line. The line's tightened and he's got a big fish on the end. That is what streamer fishing is all about. The big tug is the drug. And perhaps one other reason for your fish streamers is because you get bigger fish. Generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, a bigger fly means a bigger fish. So a lot of people like to fish big streamers to catch these bigger fish. And one really good rule of thumb to remember when you go streamer fishing is that the worse the conditions, generally the better your streamer fishing will be. So if you're a fair weather fisher and you like the sunshine and warmth, I'm sorry, you're not gonna have great streamer fishing. But if you go out in cold conditions, it's windy and it's wet, maybe there's some snow in the air, fish really turn onto the streamer with that. So in those conditions, streamer fishing is just so deadly and so effective. So that's it, that's the why and how. Now let's take a look at what kind of gear you need to fly fish with streamers effectively. Before we look at the gear, let's look at some simple physics. A brick and two balls. If I had to throw one of these balls 
at this brick and knock it down, I'm not going to choose the ping pong ball. It's just going to bounce off. I'm going to choose the baseball. Much more chance. And what that means very simply is mass moves mass. That's something you should take into account when you fish streamers. And, and I'll tell you why, because you saw some of these big streamers we put on this Dolly Lama we talked about earlier, super heavy streamer, lot of weight to it. So to cast a, a streamer of this kind of size, you absolutely need some special kind of outfits for it. Mass moves mass. That means to throw a heavier fly, I need a heavier line. A heavier line means it needs a stiffer rod. This is a six weight. And your, your standard trout outfits for most anglers are going to be nine foot rods, maybe in a five weight size. But for streamer fishing, you most certainly want to start with a six weight and maybe even a seven weight if you're going to fish really big and heavy streamers. You need a lot more weight, not just in the rod, you need a rod to throw that heavier fly line. That fly line is what's the engine that's turning over and moving your fly. So a heavier line needs a more powerful rod. This, as you can say, is a six weight. This is a predator line. When you kind of take a look at the back end and you look at the what's called the front taper here, you can see this front taper is three foot long. That's incredibly short, that's awesome. It means the weight of the line is close to the weight of the fly. It makes casting streamers so much easier. And whilst we're talking about lines, the other thing you can definitely do when you get into streamer fishing is you get a sink tip line. And this is a sink tip line. This is, five, this is a 6F slash S6. It means it's floating line with a sinking tip, the front end sinks. And sinking tips are very, very good tools, streamer fishing, particularly in a colder months when you need to get a little bit of depth. So as you get into streamer fishing, you probably want to get yourself into a streamer tip. Either way, you definitely want to get yourself a fly line that's got a bit more weight and a shorter front taper. And whilst on the topic of moving weight, that also applies to your leader. A lot of people forget about the leader. And when you're fishing streamers, mass moves mass, you want a leader that's really short. This is six foot long. Perfect. It means my fly is pretty close to my fly line. So the heavy fly line easily moves that heavy fly. So generally speaking, when you fish streamers, you don't want long leaders. You don't want supple leaders either. This thing's called a big nasty. It's a medium stiff nylon. So there's enough energy in that nylon to turn over the bigger streamers. So if you really get into streamer fishing and you want to get the specialty gear that will really help you out, you can't get away with your just standard nine foot five weight and regular nine foot five X leaders. You've got to get some specialty tackle for that. And once you've got that tackle, well, you've got to rig it up. So in our next chapter, let's look at a few streamer rigs that I like to use on the water. The simplest rig to fish a streamer is literally tie a streamer onto that short six foot leader and away you go. There it is, tie on the streamer of choice, whether it's a bait fish pattern or an annoying attractor, chuck it out there, pull it in, catch a fish. Real simple. But like everything, you can progress through your experience of learning and one of the things you'll progress to is fishing tandem streamers. I love to fish tandem streamers, that's two flies at a time. You can fish a small fly and a large fly. You can fish a light fly and a dark fly. Just give yourself an option, a selection, so that the fish have a choice of flies to grab. Uh, I think you more than double your chances of catching a fish by, catch, by, by utilizing two flies. But check your rules, right? You can't just go and fish two flies in an area that allows a single fly, because you're gonna get nicked for poaching and that isn't really what you want. Where you're allowed to, we can rig up two flies and there's a couple of options. This one is tied on what's called a dropper. So I've got a streamer hanging down from here. This is tied to what's called a tippet ring. And I got my second streamer there. And the tippet ring, well, that's just a little ring that you tie onto your leader, which allows you to easily attach droppers like you just saw in this outfit. So that's a tippet ring. If you don't have tippet rings and you still want to fish two flies, you can go the route of this kind of setup. And what I've done, I've taken my regular six foot leader tie my streamer on, and to the bend of the hook of that, I've tied with a clinch knot another piece of line, and then I've tied my second streamer behind that. So you can, fish, you can set up a tandem rig kind of like this. This is an easier way for sure. I don't like it so much for a couple of reasons. The main reason being this fly doesn't have the same natural movement in the water because I've got line on this end and a fly behind this end towing. It just doesn't fish as natural to me as a free hanging dropper. So I way prefer a free hanging dropper off a tippet ring. And one of the important things to realize when you streamer fish is that 
you really want to get a good presentation of your fly. And the clinch knot is probably the commonest knot used for tying on flies. And just be careful with the clinch knot because here's a streamer tied on with a clinch knot. And one of the things that can happen with a, a clinch knot is that through casting forces, the knot can just swivel to the side. You don't know that because you're casting and you chuck the fly out and you pull the fly in and you don't catch fish and you go, I'm not sure why I'm not catching fish. Well, what you haven't noticed is your fly is fishing at a weird angle like that. It's offset. And that's what the clinch knot does. It just locks the fly in a position. You have to straighten it up to get it to fish correctly. So a better option than a, a clinch knot, whether it's an improved clinch knot or a regular clinch knot, is you tie a fly on with a loop knot. You can see this little guy is tied on with a loop. The loop can swivel around. This is called a non-slip loop knot. And the fly will always fish true and sit, sit nicely in the water. I like that. That's a great knot to utilize. Or if you're not really into tying a whole pile of new knots, you can get what's called a, a twist clip. A twist clip is something like that. It's just a little clip, basically. You tie a clip onto the end of your leader with the improved clinch. That's okay. But the nature of the clip means that the fly will always fish. Look how flexible movement that is. That's fantastic. And what's nice about the clip is you can just twist, clip off, twist, clip on a new fly. It's a really fast way of changing your streamers. So I like to use these twist clips when I'm streamer fishing. But if you don't have them, let's take a look at how to tie that non-slip loop knot. As I said, I think it's a really important knot to learn, not just for streamers, but for a lot of fishing situations, you're gonna find that non-slip loop knot is the way to go. So how do you do it? Well, before you thread on the fly, you want to take your leader and maybe 10 inches to 12 inches away from the end you're going to tie the fly onto, you want to tie yourself a basic overhand knot, just like that. Then you thread the fly on. Imagine this is the fly eye. Thread the fly on. What you're going to do is you're going to fold that tag end back and pull this little knot until it's pretty close to the eye of the fly. I then pinch that knot and I wrap this tag end around this standing end four times. One, two, three, and four. And then I simply take this tag end and poke it right through that overhand knot I showed you just now. Put it through there, tighten everything up, bit of a jumble in this string, but easy to see. And then when you chop your tag end off, you can see you're left with a lovely non-slip loop knot that ensures the fly is always gonna fish true in the water. So if you're streamer fishing, I would definitely recommend either learning that knot or getting those twist clips, and you'll get a much better presentation of your fly in the water, and you'll probably catch a lot more fish. That's quite a good thing. Now you could absolutely walk down to your nearest river, chuck your streamer in, pull it back, and catch a fish but you want to increase the odds a little bit. And to do that, you want to fish what's called the percentage water. The percentage water is those areas that more fish lie in or bigger fish lie in. And there's visual clues you look for when you're fishing the river to find those percentage spots. One of the most obvious ones is called a drop-off. A drop-off is very simply a piece of the river that has two different depths, a shallow bit and a deep bit. And that edge between the two is called the drop-off. And that edge is an excellent place to throw your streamers across and fish. And you can usually identify drop-offs by looking at the water color. Those deeper sections of water are gonna be darker in color, darker greens and blues, and the shallower water is gonna be lighter in color. So look for those color changes, that indicates drop-offs. Those are excellent areas to concentrate throwing your streamer in. Now, another thing you can look at is a structure. Now, structures could be boulders, it could be logs, tree stumps washed down, it could be little islands, but basically something that diverts the current flow in the water. And that diversion has scoured out the water around it. It's got protection for the fish to hide around the structure. It's got a little bit of extra depth. So fishing around structures, again, a very high percentage, excellent area to concentrate on fishing your streamers. Another one is a current seam. Now rivers flow and there's not a uniform flow right across the river. A current seam, is an area of water where there's two different currents, a fast bit of current and a slow bit of current next to it. And that edge between those two currents is the seam. And really, when you have current seams like this, you wanna throw your fly across one current into the next current speed and strip your fly back through that stream. 
And that's a, a really, really good area to concentrate fishing and streamers. That's a high percentage bit of water. And then you start to look for lesser things, things like incoming tributaries, small creeks that are dumping water in, or springs or rivers that are coming in. That's bringing in different water temperatures. That's scouring out the bottoms, creating more depth. So anytime you have a, an inlet, a river coming in, a creek coming in, or a channel coming together, again, concentrate your streamers on that. Those are all the higher percentage waters. And by concentrating on those higher percentage waters, you're going to catch an awful lot more fish on the streamer. So that's it. That's how you find the fish. That's the areas you fish in the river. Now let's get down to the water and show you how exactly to fish a streamer in the river. Okay, so now you've got an idea where you're going to be fishing the water and what you're looking for to read the water. Now, let's look at a couple of other preliminaries, and that's called the retrieve, how you move the fly to try and attract the attention of a fish. And you've got to remember you're doing one of two things. You're either imitating a fish, because you've got a fish pattern on the end, and you want to imitate how that fish swims, or you're trying to attract the attention of a fish and annoy it. And so that, again, is done by the retrieve. First lesson of retrieve is always grip the line in your casting hand and strip from the hand down. This is a good retrieving technique, means I can set the hook easy, I can find the line. Don't grab above and into your hand, and above and into your hand. You're losing control like that. So keep it from your fingers and strip down. The strip is gonna vary, as I said, depending on what you're trying to do to the fish, or you're annoying them, or you're trying to feed them with a, a, a minnow pattern or something like that. But there's really three things to remember when you're retrieving. The first thing is, generally speaking, you want a weighted streamer. They, they get down and they get a nice jigging action. And the most important thing you have to do with a, a weighted streamer is the moment it lands, is you give it like about two second count. One, two, and that just lets the streamer sink a little bit down to the depth of the fish. Don't be what a lot of anglers do, cast out and immediately strip in it. That's just less effective. So cast, let the streamer sink for a couple of seconds, and then start the retrieve, whatever the retrieve is. And simply the retrieve is this, we're just pulling from hand to leg. And you can just do this, and you'll get about 50% chance of catching a fish. That's like boring Bill, doing nothing but casting it out and stripping back the same way. What's way more effective, what will really up your ante and the number of fish you catch when you're streamer fishing, is you change that retrieve. You change it up during retrieve. So let me just give you an example of what I would do. If I was fishing this pool here, cast it out, let it sink, start my strip, long, slow strips. Now I'm gonna do a couple of short jerks, and then I stop and then back to that long, slow strip again, a couple of shirt. So that, that's called the change up. And that change up is a huge attractor to fish. Fish can be seeing your fly and they can follow your fly. And if it's just one repetitive pace, like the boring bill one, a lot of them will take it, a lot of them won't. But when you change that pattern and you change the speed that fly moves, that induces them to attack it. So always, always change your strip and never have the same strip with a streamer all the way back to the bank. And the last little tip bit on that is there's what's called the drop. And the drop is simply where you let your fly, your fly is swimming along and you stop. And when you stop, particularly with a weighted fly like this, that weighted fly will start to drop and sink. And you get so many hits on that sink. So it's gonna be something like this. Let me get my line out. I'm gonna cast it out there, give it a bit of slack, let it sink, start the strip in, a couple change ups and then stop and then try that strip and change up again. With that stop, your fly sinks. And you can even push your hand towards the fly and give it a little bit of slack, which makes that fly drop. And again, those change of directions are invaluable. Fish love them. So that's your retrieves. Now, let's get into the water and actually show you a couple of fishing techniques and how to fish a streamer, what we call downstream, i.e. with the current. ways you can fish streamers in a river, simply downstream with the current and upstream against the current. Let's look at the easiest one first, the downstream fishing. The first thing to do is understand where to stand in the river. You know where the fish are, you've kind of worked it out, and you can see here my mate Tommy is fishing on the left side. We both started on this side of the river, but this run below us, there's slow water on the left where Tommy's standing. And rather than fish it from this side, which would mean you cast the fly into where the fish are lying and then you strip the fly immediately, it comes out and gives the fish really no chance to see it. The smart approach here is to do what Tommy's done, go onto that side 
So when he pulls the fly in, he's pulling it into the fish and they get a much longer view. So when you approach a pool, kind of take a moment to look at it and try and understand where you're going to get the best angle to keep your fly in that zone where the fish are. Now, once you've got the position, the standard techniques are going to be utilize the mat, the M, the mend, the A, the angle of line you cast to the current, T, the tension in your line. If you can't remember or you don't know what that refers to, go back to our earlier episodes, basic river tactics, and there's a whole chapter on fishing the mat, and it explains how significant mends are, what angle changes, and what tension changes does to your fly. It's an integral part of river fishing, so if you haven't seen that, absolutely go ahead and check that out. Once you've got that, and you've done the retrieves we just talked about, then the next couple of things you can do is one technique is just to swing the fly. Hey, you don't even need to retrieve it. You can cast the fly across the current and just swing the rod tip round and let the line swing around in the current. And the current will do all the work for you. You don't necessarily need to retrieve. You can just flop it out and the current will sweep it round and you've covered the whole width. So that's a really good thing. The swing is deadly. So we'll always get a swing in there. When you're swinging, you can encompass a rod twitch as well. So when you're actually getting your line swinging, one really useful technique is just twitch your rod like this. Pull the rod and drop it back. Pull the rod and drop it back. Pull the rod and drop it back. You can do that when you're swinging, or you can do that when you're stripping. Twitch and drop. Because that twitch, you're trying to get these fish excited and fired up. And the easiest way to do that is make the fly do something spontaneous and erratic. And that's what this twitch does. The nice thing about the pull is it makes the fly dart. That's good. But what really works is when you put the rod back, it gives slack and the fly drops down. So you get a very effective movement like this in the water. Very, very effective. So absolutely utilize the twitch of the rod as you're swinging. And really, what you're trying to do here, most streamer takes, especially if you're a novice streamer angler, most streamer takes are going to come from you feeling a grab. And you're gonna do that by utilizing a nice low rod tip like this, close to the water. It means I'm in direct touch with the fly. I have contact with the fly. So if I strip in my line in, let's get some line out. If I'm stripping line in and my rod is low, I have a lovely tight line to the fly. And when a fish grabs it, I'll feel everything. And the moment you feel something, you just set the hook away from the fly. Fly's there, set the hook away. What you don't wanna do is fish your streamer with a rod high like this. Because that rod high has got a big loop of slack hanging down. And when a fish grabs that fly, that, all that happens is that loop of slack tightens and you probably won't feel anything. So you're gonna miss a lot of those grabs. You don't even know you got the grabs because you didn't feel them. So whatever happens when you're fishing, stripping, matting, retrieving, swinging, whatever, keep that rod low, close to the water and you'll feel far more of those takes. And then the other way you can feel takes or know that there's a fish on the end, believe it or not, you can get a trout, a 20 inch trout, come up and grab your fly and you will feel nothing. That happens frequently. And so as you get a better streamer angler, one thing you'll learn is the wisdom of watching. Watch your streamer in the water. Like today I've got a nice bright white streamer. Right, it's a big white stream, it's easy to see. I've got sunshine. I've got clear water. And so what I'm not going to do is cast the fly out and just kind of pay no attention to it and just look at my mate and just swing. I'm going to watch that stream the whole way through. I can see it because it's white. I can see it because the sunshine and the clear water. If you watch that, you'll see the streamer suddenly disappear. And you go, I, where, where is it? And then you'll see it again. What's happened is a trout has come up and grabbed the streamer and you haven't felt anything and then it's rejected the streamer. And that's why you don't see it, because it's in the fish's mouth. We call it the light bulb going out. It's literally, you see the light bulb and then it's out, and then it's back on again. So if you see your light bulb go out, set the hook. Almost certainly it's because there's a fish has grabbed it in its mouth. Or if you see the fly move sideways in the water, something's done that, probably a trout. So those are, your, in a nutshell, those are the simplest ways of fishing streamers downstream with a current. It's very effective. It's a pretty easy way to do it. One other way of fishing streamers, a little bit more complicated, and we're gonna take a look at that right now, is the upstream streamer. 
So let's go and find a spot and fish upstream stream. There are times when you want to fish a streamer upriver, against the current. Pretty obvious one is because there's a really good looking hole and there's some kind of obstacle. There may be a tree, there may be a, a rock, there might be something that prevents you standing above that and fishing into the hole. So a pretty simple one, stand below, cast up into the hole and then strip your streamer that way. That's a really easy one. But another one is sometimes you want a deep streamer. Maybe it's a bright sunny day like today and you just feel like you need to get a little bit more depth and perhaps you don't have a sinking line. So a great way of getting extra depth is fishing upstream because when you fish upstream, then you've got the line coming towards you and that slack is developing as it comes towards you allows that streamer to get down and gives you a bit more depth. So really there's a couple of good reasons why you would fish upstream streamer. It catches a lot of fish, so don't forget about it. Do try this one out. Not many people fish streamers upstream. It's a little bit more complicated. And the reason it's more complicated is because it's harder to stay in touch with your fly, right? If your current is coming towards you, let's say three miles an hour, and let's say you want your streamer to go three miles an hour, you have to strip at six miles an hour to get that three mile an hour streamer speed because you have to keep up with the current, keep your line tight, and then move the fly. So it's a little bit more difficult. Not a lot of do it, anglers do it, as I said, because of that reason, because the whole problem of keeping the line tight is stripping. So the important thing is in slow water, you don't need necessarily a fast strip. You can do your slower strips and still be in touch with the fly. But when you're fishing upstream in super fast water, your strips have got to be really quick. You want to watch the end of your line under your rod tip. And if the line is passing your rod tip, you're just not stripping quick enough. You want to stay in touch with that fly. Big top tip there for upstream streamer fishing. The other thing I'd suggest is you kind of contemplate what angle you want to cast. If you cast straight up the river, you don't need to do anything other than strip. You can keep your rod tip still. You can throw your line up the river, keep your rod tip low and just strip. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything except strip the right speed. That's straight up river. But if you throw your line across the river, kind of a 45 degree angle maybe, more across the river. Not only do you need to strip, but you also need to start swinging the rod with the line to keep up with the line. So you again, always maintain tension straight to the fly. And then one of the harder ones is when you make the cast more across the river, more, more of a kind of a 90 degree angle, but still up river. And then you're still stripping, but you're doing a lot of swinging with the rod. You want your rod tip leading in front of the fly line all the time. So move the fly, make sure it works, right? You want your fly to move and that's what's gonna get the attention of the fish. You wanna stay in touch because you wanna feel those grabs. Change your angles. And perhaps the deadliest thing on the upstream streamer is what everyone calls the whip. And the whip is kind of a combination of what we talked about here in the previous chapter. Upstream and downstream. And what that means is that when you cast your lines upstream and you give it a bit of slack, let it sink to start off with, start the strip, and then as your line washes past you, it tightens and the fly does this whip path. If you can time that right over where you think the fish are lying, the fish have a hell of a reaction. They just want to grab it. So don't miss that out. If you know a really good spot, throw your streamer upstream, whip it around where that fish is, and you'll probably have a really good chance of getting that one. So streamer fishing when wading, pretty simple. You can cast it up, you can cast it down, feel, watch the fly, adjust your trip strip speed and let it sink. Those are your great top tips. But you can also fish streamers not wading. You can get in a drift boat, go down the river in a drift boat and fish streamers out of a drift boat. And pretty well everything's the same on that, but there's a few little nuances to that. So let's take a look at fishing streamers out of a drift boat. So why would you fish out of a drift boat? Well, it's a pretty easy answer to be fair you cover a lot of water. With drift boats, you tend to get in a boat and at the beginning of the day, and at the end of the day, you get out of the boat and you might float five miles, you might float 10 miles. You cover a vast amount of water you physically cannot do if you're wading and driving along and getting into the river and wading. So you cover a tremendous amount of water and that's why fishing out of drift boats is pretty effective. Now, when you fish out of drift boats, Pretty well everything we've said is the same. The, the rig's gonna be the same, the flies, the retrieves are gonna be the same. You're still gonna look for drop-offs and you're still gonna look for structure. But a couple of things to be aware of. Most of the time when you're fishing out of a drift boat, 
the person on the oars is going to row your boat down the water and you're going to be casting as close to the bank as you can and then pulling your fly away from the bank towards the middle of the river, towards the boat. As a result of that, you tend to throw your fly close to the bank, make five or six strips, maybe seven, and pick it up and shoot it back in there again. You don't strip the line all the way back to you, you just make five or six strips. And what that means is when you do a lot of drift boat fishing, you want to make sure you choose a fly line that's really going to aid that. This line here is a streamer tip line. This line, when you look at this line, you'll see that the front is very fat. There's a lot of fatness in this picture, and that fatness is relative to the diameter of the fly line, relative to the weight of the fly line. This means this line is very front loaded. So it's very easy with a line of that shape to literally cast your line out, make three, four, five strips, pick it up, cast it back out, three. That's very, very efficient. Rather than a line where the weight's at the back, where you have to strip it in, and you have to make maybe a couple of false casts before you lay your line down, that's just nowhere near as efficient as having these front-loaded fly lines. So make sure you get the right type of line. And then when you're in the boat, you can be in the front of the boat. You could be on the oars, then <laughs> this part is irrelevant, but if you're in the front of the boat, or you could be in the back of the boat. And there's a couple of little nuances to that. When you're in the front of the boat, you're the first person to see that pile of brush or that drop off where the fish might be. So you get your first shot at it. So look in advance, always look in advance of where you're fishing. Look for those ideal structures, that high percentage water as it comes up to you. And you're gonna get literally one cast and you strip your fly in. And if you miss that shot or if you don't get a grab, then the boat's past it and the guy in the back has the chance. The guy in the back, He's got a basic rule of thumb, and that is don't cast in front of the oars. You got from the oars back. But what's good about that is that why I like fishing out of the back of the boat is that if the guy in the front misses a spot, they don't see it or they don't do a bad cast and they miss it, you've got two or three attempts as you drift down past it to get your fly back into that zone. In the front of the boat, you get the first shot, but the back of the boat, you get the most shots. And really, that's, it. that's why it's our fishing out of a boat is so essential. It's a great way of covering a lot of water and covering a lot of fish as a result of being in a drift boat. So there you have it. The core techniques and tactics that you as a fly fisher should know in order to be able to become a successful angler with streamers. Hopefully you've learned enough in this episode to approach the river with confidence, know what to do when there are no fish rising or when you just need to feel that tug. As always, I want to end this episode with a friendly reminder to do your part in keeping the river clean and the fish healthy. Look after the environment. Leave no trace of your visit to the water and please treat the fish you catch with the utmost respect. I hope you enjoyed this episode and also hope to see you on the water one day putting your newfound streamer skills to great use. Thanks a lot for watching.